Good afternoon and welcome back to my workbench. Uh, today I've been working on the power supply um, that I wanted to build and uh, after making the printed circuit board I finally have got around to uh, actually putting the components in it. And I've almost finished, I haven't done the op amps yet, I'm going to leave those till completely last and I've also haven't done these six resistors here and I just wanted to make a quick video about those because uh, I came across something quite interesting. Now. I've been sort of using up old components that I've had just lying around and trays and things um, just for the sake of using them up uh, and of course the only problem is with those is that some of them uh, have got tarnished leads and um, a bit crusty especially these ones, these 33k ohm resistors these ones are quite crusty, these ones are pretty oxidized not just tarnished, they're actually oxidized, but pitted, they're not that great um, if you do want to use a component like this, you can't solder it straight in because the solder just won't take to the lead. It uh, won't create a connection very well, and if it does, it'll be probably quite unreliable. So you really do need to clean the leads first. Um, and there are a few ways of doing that. Uh, sandpaper is one of them, but it's a bit tedious. I did find, however, that for mild tarnishing or whatever, um, an even easier way is to use one of these Scotch-Brite pads, scouring pads for cleaning pots, um, which is also used for cleaning the PCB copper before you want to put the edge resistor on or before you want to tin it and all that. Um, but I found if you take one of these and just uh, take the resistor and uh, sort of shove it into the uh, into the pad and then just sort of draw it in and out a few times and it actually uh, scratches the um, tarnishing all off really quickly and works really well. So you just shove that in there and go like this. Really simple much simpler than trying to do it with a piece of sandpaper on such a small wire. Um, this uh, method here only works well for just tarnished leads though. Um, if they're pitted and sort of worse then you kind of do have to use sandpaper um, which is not too bad and then you can uh, retin them um, because these component leads are basically made of copper um, and then they're just tin coated with uh, tin, I suppose, um, and uh, when they oxidize, when the tin oxidizes to a certain extent, you just have to. Well, I, I found that this best is to sandpaper it all off and um, start again, basically. So this I'm going to show up a close up of this in a second. Okay, so here are the six resistors close up. Um, I've just uh, got some various ones here to show the comparison. Um, this one here is a brand new one. You can see the lead is very shiny. Um, it's uh, how you'd expect them to be, so straight out of the packet um, that's what you want. Now these ones here, this is the one I just showed previously that I was uh, using with the with the pad um, you can see that's also still quite shiny um, after I've cleaned it it's it's a little bit duller obviously than the than the brand new one um, but it is it is quite shiny and it's also not not pitted or anything, there's no there's no uh, problem with that. It, it's a little bit dull, but the flux will take care of any any excess uh, stuff. Um, this one here, on the other hand, is a little bit different. It's actually um, this was slightly tarnished too. But funny enough, one of the leads was actually uh, not tinned at all. You can see the actual bare copper there, um, and the actual whole packet of these were like that. They just seem to have only tinned one lead. I don't know why. Possibly um, that lead's intended to be just dipped in plastic or something. Um, if you've seen some some circuit boards where they uh, bend the resistor like this and they have it soldered down um, to the board sticking out like that and they uh, coat the top part of the lead with plastic or or some kind of paint or something. So maybe they just uh, used that because they they didn't bother tinning it because they were going to use plastic instead in the assembly, some sort of um, special order possibly. I don't know. But anyway, we can still clean that up just as well with this, you sort of stuff it in the uh, Scotch-Brite pad and twirl it around. You can sort of rotate it as you as you do it, that'll also help. Um, you can hold the pad and put some pressure on it too. But we can see that it's coming out um, very shiny and it's uh, basically perfectly fine, so I can just tin that afterwards, it doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to be left bare. Um, it is kind of tricky getting this, getting the leads in, but it's it's worth it, I think. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, yeah, so th so there we go. I mean, these three are basically uh, perfectly usable. I will tin this one, but uh, there we go. Th this one's uh, one that I've just tinned before. Um, you should be able to see it's uh, quite shiny. There's a little bit of flux residue on it, um, 
around the body and on the leads where I've tinned it, but you can see it's uh, very, very quite shiny and quite clean. Um, as opposed to these 33k ones over here, which are still kind of dull and are slightly pitted. Um, you can already see, especially on this one, um, this one I haven't done anything to it yet. You can see the uh, lead is... I mean, it doesn't look terrible. It's still shiny. Um, but there is pitting. There is corrosion, I guess. Um, oxidization. And it will... Even to this extent, even though it doesn't look terrible, this particular one here will not be very soldable at all. Um, if I was to put this in the board and try and solder it as it was, it would be quite terrible unless I used some really strong flux or, or something, um, which would be a bad idea. Um, I don't particularly like using that unless it's a last resort, because you do have to be very careful in cleaning it off again so that your board doesn't corrode later on. Um, this particular one, I'll just uh, straighten the lead out first. <laughs> you can see this one's been lying around um, for quite some time. So if I just uh, straighten the lead, take a pair of pliers, and I mean, there's not really any economical logic to this whatsoever because resistors and other components like this are so cheap that you know doing this is is ultimately, from an econo economical standpoint, completely pointless. <laughs> but you know, I've got them. I don't want to waste them, so I might as well do it. And and it does provide, um, you know, something to do if you're uh, if you want something to just take your mind off things. You can just sort of spend a while just cleaning up old resistors. Um, or if you're desperate and you need to quickly assemble something and all you've got is something old and crusty and you need to use it and uh, you just need to clean it up. So I'm going to do a little bit of... Uh, use this a little bit with this one, but it's not going to get all the uh, all the junk off. Um, so yeah, that is, a, uh, that is worth noting. Um, there will be some some still some uh, oxidization there and you can see hopefully that that's uh, it has cleaned up that side a lot better than the other side but yeah I, I still wouldn't solder it directly it still needs some work so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to sandpaper it as well and then I'm going to retin it so that's that that's okay but but yeah could be better. So we can take the um, sandpaper and the uh, trick to this I guess is just to sort of fold it in half um, around the lead like this and then to uh, again just draw it in and out hold the sandpaper together twirl the component around with your other hand as you drag it in and out. I'm using 400 grit sandpaper you probably don't want to go any coarser than that um, for this sort of thing but the uh, this obviously is uh, highly dependent on how much you've straightened the lead first. Um, and this will take the oxidized tin off. Take things uh, back down to the copper even in some places, but that's fine because we're just going to retin the entire thing anyway. So, you know, you can just sort of do this. You don't need to really get it clean right up next to the body because no one's going to solder that close. Um, just uh, you know, a few millimeters away is fine. But yeah, uh, there we go. So that's uh, that's fairly clean. Um, not perfect, but it's good enough. And then I can just bend it to the uh, spacing that I require which is about this much here. And uh, now, I'll uh, bring my... i uh, just brush away all that stuff. I'll bring my uh, little helping hands thing here in. If we just set the resistor in the, uh, in the clamp there. And... Um, might just have to... Uh, Zoom out a little bit. There we go. If we now just take our solder and our soldering iron, I can um, just bring that up to the lead. And 
I can just turn that. And there we go. Much cleaner, much shinier, and much more usable than it previously was. And if I take uh, take this side, you can see the uh, bare copper on that lead there. And I just need to uh, get this on there. So there we go. That's the uh, that's the resistor done. You can see the uh, the difference between the ends where I haven't bothered tinning them properly, um, and the uh, top part where but I've just tinned that. It's uh, nice and bright and shiny and clean. And the body has got a little bit of flux on it, but that doesn't really matter. You can just uh, scrape that off with your fingernail. We'll just leave it there. It's not really going to do anything. It's just mild rosin flux. It won't do much. Um, there we go. So I can uh, get that resistor and I can uh, use that in my board now. It's almost as clean as the uh, as this um, brand new one here.